Dzień dobry, nazywam się Małgorzata Dolata i pracuję w firmie Water Research Center, ponieważ cała moja, że tak powiem, kariera zawodowa jest związana z Anglią. Moja, przygotowałam moją prezentację po angielsku, także prezentacja jest po angielsku. Nie, nie jestem w stanie się, że tak powiem, zmieścić w czasie, jeśli mówię po polsku. Także. Uh, ben, uh, okay, so switching to English, uh, so I'm talking about the uh, UK approach to uh, financing of uh, construction and maintenance of the drainage systems. Uh, the whole, the, the relationship is quite complicated and what I'm going to present here is a simplified version and I also want to point out that I'm only talking about England. Uh, situation in uh, Wales, Scotland and Northern Ireland is slightly different. So my presentation covers the different bodies that are responsible, uh, overview of funding. Uh, as the next step, I will talk about the central government funding, which, in, uh, which will be just a government funding in, po in Polish, uh, water and uh, sewage companies, how they fund it, and in the end, I will touch on a long-term strategy. Uh, okay. So in the UK, we can divide the drainage into the uh, building, road and land drainage, and there are different bodies responsible, uh, starting, uh, starting with the uh, kind of strategic overview, which is DEFRA, uh, which is a department uh, for environment, uh, food and rural affairs. Uh, they're responsible for the overall uh, policy on flood risk management. On the other side, we have a Ministry of Housing, Committee and Local Governments, uh, they are responsible to, um, for planning. They basically ensure the flood risk uh, management is taken into account in a local planning. They're also responsible for the building drainage uh, uh, regulate, regulation. So in terms of the building drainage, they saw responsibility of the water companies. Uh, water, water and sewage companies are also responsible for uh, about, about half of the road drainage that are, is connected to this, uh, this system. Uh, highway agency is responsible for the uh, strategic roads, strategic A roads and uh, motorways. Local, local highway uh, authorities and lead local uh, flood authorities are responsible for the, uh, for the remaining road drainage on the minor roads and uh, lead local flood authorities are also responsible for uh, land drainage and that only covers the ordinary water courses which is a uh, tributary to the main rivers. Internal drainage board are, are responsible for the um, drainage in the low-lying areas, for example, Norfolk. Historically, they were responsible for um, maybe uh, widening the rivers, straightening the rivers, or even land reclamation. Currently, they only manage what was done in the past. And they're also responsible for um, keeping the uh, uh, water levels low in winter and uh, high in summer for the purpose of agriculture. And at the end, uh, we have an environment agency who is responsible for the main rivers, uh, sea, and uh, reservoirs. Uh, this, this is pretty much the same diagram. I just wanted to uh, show you which stage uh, the different uh, bodies are kind of get involved in. So, uh, as you can see in the blue is a strategic overview, uh, green is planning, and in the end, in slightly orange one, is a delivery. So basically all the, all the um, stakeholders, partners, bodies that will, uh, that will be delivering the projects. As you can see, for example, Environment Agency will get involved in every stage of the process. So moving, uh, now that I explain different responsibilities, uh, moving to funding. Um, flood and coastal erosion uh, risk management is, uh, cover for, uh, is funded from different sources. On, on the left, uh, we have funding from the agriculture, and that comes from the uh, general drainage rates and also the um, agriculture drainage rates. Uh, this is then used by the internal uh, drainage board in the, in, in the management of the drainage in the low-lying areas. Uh, central government funding 
uh, basically government is the, uh, is the funds majority of the projects uh, in relation to the fraud risk and, major, uh, and uh, also DEFRA, uh, most of the funding comes from DEFRA and is given to uh, environment agency as the uh, flood defense grant in aid and also some of, uh, some of the funding goes to local authorities as, a, as some of the local schemes grant. Uh, environment agency provides funding to the capital funding for the internal drainage boards and environment agency also provides the maintenance um, funding to the regional flood uh, and coastal committees. Uh, we have 12 uh, committees in England. On the other, on the other hand, we have uh, local authorities uh, they funded by the local taxation and also uh, by the third party contributions. Uh, they, they also put some money into regional flood and uh, uh, coastal committees, which kind of are li uh, linking body in England for the, for the purpose of the flood risk management. Uh, oh, sorry, wrong way. So I just wanted to give you, uh, explain some principles of the funding in, in, the, uh, in England. So, some of the funding will be uh, offered to every project, but only those projects that will deliver sufficient benefits will be given 100%. Uh, others will either have to find uh, savings or will have to find uh, funding from other sources. Uh, projects should, okay, projects should uh, protect, uh, especially those most at the risk and uh, less able to protect themselves. That's another principle. Uh, projects should be treated equally based on the benefits and uh, damages that they will help to avoid. Taxpayer should not pay for any new developments in the flood risk areas. And after the January 2012, none of the new developments or either the properties that were converted into housing uh, are considered for the national funding in, in, in the area of flood risk management that have to be provided by the developer. Local decision making should not come at the expenses of long-term planning. So basically, uh, once the projects are set in a kind of more strategic way, they should not be changed based on the uh, local decision. Like, And in the end, all the projects should be nationally consistent so they're technically sound and sustainable. Okay, local, gov uh, local government funding. I already said that uh, local, local governments uh, get funding from the central government, but they also get, uh, they also paid by the third parties, which is uh, developers, for example, uh, and this is a community infrastructure charge and they get money through the council tax. Council tax is a local tax in the, in the UK for every property and is based on the value of a property. Uh, and that is, a, uh, that is a charge that uh, inhabitants pay for, a, for different services. They will include the, I don't know, police force, uh, uh, rubbish collection and that kind of stuff, but it also is a, a charge for the flood risk. Uh, uh, flood risk. Uh, developers. So I already said they pay to the local authorities. They also pay. Uh, they also pay um, money to the local water company for the connection to the asset, and they also need to pay uh, a charge to the water company uh, for providing additional uh, for for dealing with additional capacity in the surface water system. Uh, developers also need to provide the local infrastructure for the flood risk management. Um, okay, moving on to the water companies, uh, water and sewage companies and how they fund it. So basically DEFRA sets the uh, national priorities and currently is a, a long-term resilience to flood and also protecting the customers. Um, based on this, water companies uh, prepare five-year business plans. Uh, those business plans are called uh, price reviews, uh, and current one is the PR19, in short, PR19. Um, 
And in these plans, they, uh, they base on a cost-benefit analysis basis. And after the plans are prepared, they consulted with the water company's uh, customers, whether the customer are willing to pay for the, for the services. Once, they, uh, once the plans uh, are consulted, they finalize and, uh, and DEFRA, uh, sorry, uh, OFWAT, who is the water company's regulator, then assess them. And at the end, the uh, price for water and sewage are set for the next five years. Okay. So, I already, uh, uh, so continuing with the uh, water company's funding, uh, I've already mentioned that developers have to pay a charge to the water company. Uh, also, the um, water company's customer, uh, they, they charge through their water bill for the surface water. However, if the customer can uh, provide evidence, they have soak away or some other form of a, uh, uh, some other form uh, where they collect the surface water, they can get a rebate on their bill uh, for the purpose of the surface water management. Uh, there is also, water companies also charge their customers for highway drainage. Uh, Someone will thought that uh, since the, the, this discharge could be, uh, this, could, this could come from the highway agency in their customers, although uh, the legislation prevent that. And in 1998, there was a report produced uh, that basically uh, concluded that there will be uh, very little benefits if the charges will be uh, switched to the water companies. Uh, okay, section. 114A of the uh, Water Industry Act, which was just added recently, allow now water companies to fund sustainable urban drainage systems from uh, for the for the drainage different than uh, from the building. So, for example, if we had uh, culverted water course, which is basically uh, concreted water course, they now can uh, separate those flows by using the uh, sustainable urban drainage system, and they can fund it from their own sources. So, and in the end, I just wanted to say that historically, the, the, the whole flood risk management wasn't really coordinated in the UK. And in 2007, there was a big flood in, in, in the UK with 55,000 of uh, properties affected, uh, half a million people uh, didn't have uh, access to water and electricity. And following that, uh, a PID review was produced, which basically summarized lessons learned from, from that flooding. And afterwards, the surface water management plan were developed. Uh, these are quite lo local plans. And in the end, it was thought they not sufficient. So uh, the drainage strategy framework was uh, created. This is a bit more strategic uh, document uh, on a catchment, uh, catchment level basis. That still wasn't, wasn't thought to be uh, enough and recently the drainage and wastewater management plan uh, were developed and uh, basically this is a long-term drainage strategy for, uh, for England and allow the water companies to plan for in the longer term and uh, assess the capacity in the, uh, in the network for the purpose of the uh, surface water management. So, yes, and I just want to thank you and just made the time. Okay, dziękuję, dziękuję bardzo. <laughs>